Good morning and welcome back to my health and fitness journey. Oh my goodness, thank you for being here. So today, I don't know what week we're starting off. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen whenever I figure it out in editing. But um, I did not update you guys at all for yesterday, Monday. But so today is Tuesday, is day 57 of the journey. 27 days walking. Oh my gosh, I have my call with my counselor here in just like literally 10 seconds. I just wanted to say that I'm down to 226.4. That is after having the stomach bug and then gaining like two pounds back and then actually losing a little bit of weight. So um, I'm hoping that I kind of stay on a, a slow, gradual loss trend. Um, part of me does worry. Um, as I'm sure if you've tried to lose weight, I'm sure you can relate that when you lose a chunk of weight, you're like terrified, you're going to just like gain it back. Like what if it was just water weight or whatever. Um, so I'm just, I'm trying to be positive there. Um, did my walk this morning. Anyways, life is really good. Work has gotten really busy. Um, I guess I need to get on my call here with my counselor. I have a new counselor today I've never met before. So this will be interesting. Kind of telling her my whole backstory. I'm having a coffee today, which is actually, look how cute them turtles are. Um, it's actually black coffee, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to try the pumpkin spice um, creamer that I got my daughter. And it's really good. It's yummy. Anyways, um, I need to remember, I want what I want to share with you guys is I went through a lot of my weight loss or weight loss or body selfie photos that I've had from over the years, like literally from 2010 to 2023. And I've had them all mostly um, up until like maybe 2015 were saved in a folder on my cloud storage. And because I was writing a blog article about, um, what was it? I think it was 16 things I've learned over the years um, about uh, like post-op weight loss surgery um, after 13 years. So basically long-term what people can expect after weight loss surgery. So I was writing an article about that. So I was looking for some older images of myself to include uh, because this has been such a long journey for me. And that's whenever I realized I was missing some years. So I actually went through and updated that. So now I literally have anywhere from 10 to 15 plus photos of myself from 2010 to 2023. And it is really wild, like looking at yourself over the years, remembering where you were in life at that point. Because for me, it's all been a journey. It's all been like self-discovery, um, learning new things, breaking bad habits, whatever. Every single year in my life marked some sort of milestone. And it is so like, I remember it like it was yesterday. It's so wild. But the one thing that I really like am hoping to take from that is that, um, oh, two minutes late. Ah. Um, a lot of the years, you guys, a lot of the years, I look the same. A lot of the years, like I'm just I'm within a 10 to 20 pound range there where I've spent the majority of the last 13 years. I had times where I was heavier and I had times when I was lower, but most of the time I was right in this, in this, in the middle. However, like there was a time when I was around this same weight, but I was doing yoga all the time and my body was shaped different. And there was a time when I was around this weight, but I was literally working out like a fiend, working out hardcore all the time. I still ate like crap, but my, my fitness was on point and I was literally three to four hours in the gym every day and my body was shaped completely different. And so anyways, it just reminded me that the biggest way that I'm going to see a difference in the way my body looks is my fitness. What am I doing to be active and to move and to be fit? And that's really my goal now. Um, and I hope for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. So Hey, so if you have enjoyed this video, then I recommend you come and check me out on Patreon where the full video will be um, shared on the health and fitness tier where we are creating a tribe of like-minded individuals trying to prioritize their health and better their life. And over there, I share all of the weigh-ins, the before and after pictures, the nitty-gritty, all of the details, a lot more personal, in-depth um, sharing. And so if you're interested in that, rather than just kind of hitting the highlights here on YouTube, then come check me out on Patreon. The link is always in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day. 
All right, so I'm back just really quickly at the end of the day because I thought I'd show you what I made for dinner. I have this three cheese tortellini in a uh, garlic alfredo sauce with some Parmesan cheese, which I normally would just eat all by itself, like that'd be my whole meal. But I threw in some bacon and some roasted shrimp and roasted asparagus. Added these to get my protein and these to get my veggies. And it is kind of a carb heavy meal just because of the pasta but I'm treating myself and it looks delicious. I'm gonna eat the pasta last and see what all I can eat. Oh my goodness, I'm finally back for an update. This week, you guys, life be lifing. Okay, oh my God, today is Thursday. Um, I'm wearing in, I didn't even run on my tracker yet. I'm 225 point something, which is great because I'm finally making progress. So the thing is, is since the stomach virus, because I went so many days with like hardly any food in my stomach i guess it helped my actual stomach shrink down a bit i've been doing really good with not eating too much um or like just too often i guess really i'm i'm not meeting my protein goals but i'm meeting my calorie goals and so i'm trying to figure out ways to like kind of do both but that literally requires a lot of effort so anyway so i'm continuing to lose like just a little tiny bit every single day which is great um that's really all I could hope for. I have taken on a bunch of work commitments lately and I've literally got myself booked up probably 70 to 80 hours a week worth of work. I've got three weeks worth of videos for YouTube and Patreon not edited. Um, my goodness. Um, I have another, I have another <laughs> three weeks worth of videos. So that's three, four, what will end up being five or six videos. I've just not had a chance to edit them. I've literally been working so much. Um, this is a temporary craziness for me because I had been looking for multiple new clients because I needed to bring on clients. I needed to, I needed more income. And so, um, I had been like basically putting myself out there for like months and then just finally all at one time, like a huge shift or something energetically. Um, I had like five people want to work with me all of a sudden. And so I brought on two new clients who together end up being probably about 30 hours worth of work. And they just both started this week. And so this is the learning curve and the training and everything is new. And there's lots of meetings and there's lots of calls. Um, the other three are small cleanup jobs started last week or this week. They're temporary, but until they're done, it's a good 20, 30 hours worth of work every week until I get them done. So I've been working a lot and working late to try and get those cleanup jobs done so I can relieve some stress off of myself. Also get some income coming in, additional income. Um, so it just has me crazy. I'm sitting here right now on task I planned on doing this morning. I figured I would spend an hour, hour and a half on it. I spent five hours, five hours on a task for a client. <laughs> Which is like, hey, that's more money. Yeah, but still, like, I have other things to do. So, and I just found out today that my, one of my nieces, who's pregnant with her second kid, having her first daughter, is, um, she was scheduled for a C-section two weeks from now. And she started having contractions last night. They took her to the hospital this morning because she had, like, a regular doctor appointment. So she went to the doctor appointment. They sent her to the hospital. Now they're keeping her and they were trying to decide if they were going to like give her meds to stop contractions or if to let her have the baby early at 37 and a half weeks. And we just found out 10 minutes ago that they're letting her have it and they're scheduling her C-section for this afternoon at 2.30, which is, oh my God, in nine minutes. Ah, in nine minutes, she's going to be born. Um... And this is my sister's first granddaughter, which is very exciting. She's got two grandsons and her first granddaughter and her second granddaughter is due in like three months. So anyway, really, really exciting. Everybody is super excited. And as soon as she told me, I'm like, oh my God, I want to come. I want to go, you know, like the hospital where they're doing is like an hour from me. And I thought, wow, okay, it'd probably take me like four or five hours to drive over there and back and spend two to three hours with them. And then I just immediately felt this like stress and panic, like all throughout my body because I have so much work to do. Um, so I was telling my husband and my sister and I was like, maybe what I'll do is I'll come tomorrow afternoon, like the day after she's had the baby, whatever. 
Um, and my sister was like, well, maybe you should just wait until Saturday when you're not normally working anyway, because they should be home from the hospital. Because apparently post COVID, uh, if you have no issues, even with a C-section, they release them after 24 hours. I'm like, that's crazy. I had a C-section and I thought they still held, uh, people two to three days post-op. Um, anyway, guess not. So Anyway, I'm just sitting here stressing over that. Thought I would catch up with you guys. I've been doing really good with my eating. And when I say like staying on track, I mean like under um, 1,400 calories. I've been so busy today that all I've done with my tracker is I've like highlighted the stuff I've done. But I've not filled in yesterday's calories and protein or today's weight and anything. So, But let me just go back to... Um, Saturday... That was like the first day I was like mostly over the stomach bug. It really hung on with me. Like when I finally, like when I started getting better, I was like 40% better. The next day I was like 70% better. The next day I was like 90% better. Meaning like I was not just like 100% when it finally passed. 222 right now. Love that. Anyway, I was not 100% when it passed. So when I got to where I could start eating again, there were still some things that my stomach just did not want and I would throw up. Um, but then I could eat other things. So now here we are a few days later and I think, I think I'm good. I think I'm a hundred percent to tell you the truth. Two days ago, I took a huge swig of whiskey because I'm convinced that way back, uh, in February of 2020, my husband was the first one in our family to ever get COVID and he felt so terrible that he thought it would be a great idea to take like three shots of whiskey and go to sleep. And so he did. That mofo was over that stuff so fast, but he was, he was like on death's doorstep for 24 hours. He felt so miserable and then boom, it was gone. And I'm convinced that the alcohol just killed it. It literally just killed it. But anyway, so, um, so I tried that two days ago. I did a huge swig, maybe, maybe two shots worth of, um, whiskey. And then, uh, and that, that was nice. I mean, it was not like enough to be like drunk or anything. I was sitting here working. I continued working. Um, just, you know, felt like nice and calm. Cause I'm like super stressed with all this work stuff. Um, and then, uh, yesterday I did another swig of the whiskey, which would have been like, maybe just like a shot. Like it was less than the first time and I feel totally normal now. But anyway, so Saturday I had 1,525 calories, uh, 40 grams of protein. Sunday I had 1,435 calories. Monday I had 1,365 calories. Tuesday I had 1,280 calories. And yesterday, I think I was right around 1,400. My goal is 1,400. And with the 1,400, as long as I stick to that, even if I don't get enough protein and even if I don't drink enough water or sleep enough, I'm still losing like ounces every day. And that's what I like. That's very motivating and encouraging for me. If it's two ounces, I don't care. But if I'm waking up and I'm weighing in two ounces smaller every morning, I'm just like, yes, I'm headed the right direction. This is wonderful. So on my cycle does come in five to six days typically the week before i'm usually very hungry i'm craving carbs and pasta whatever that has not hit me yet so knock on wood maybe that doesn't have to be a thing i feel like it's always been a thing for me but here we are i'm doing good um tonight i'm making a uh homemade chicken pot pie so i don't really know how to figure out the calories for that i made homemade chili last night the night before or I don't remember what I made. There was one night. Oh, it, it was a couple of nights ago. I was going to make the three cheese tortellini and Alfredo sauce with bacon, which normally I make as like a whole meal. I think I might have filmed that. But anyways, I ended up having more protein and actually made some asparagus to go with it. And I had like this much, this much tortellini. I had like five tortellinis. Um, and I ate them last. So by the time I had the five, I was like stuffed and no more would fit because of my lap band. And so that was amazing because I got like my carb fix, but like I didn't get very much. I didn't even get a serving size of that. So that really helped keep that meal like low calorie. So I like doing that rather than like abstaining from things that I love. I'd rather just eat like a little tiny bit. And if you're mindfully eating and you're not like trying to do a thousand other things while you eat, which I'm super guilty of, then you can just be like 
you know, eat your bite of pasta and be like, oh, this pasta is so wonderful. You know what I mean? And you just take the time to like enjoy it because why do you love it? You love it because it tastes good. So why not do that? Who is messaging me? <sighs> I need to get back to work. So I'm on the call with Ben now. Okay. Where did you get that? Mm, one moment. That is, um, I would say she's like a boss. She is another accounting firm that I work with. Um, she owns her company. I own my company. But I basically like subcontract with her and do some work. We've got five to seven clients together. And she's having a meeting with one of our mutual clients today because he was wanting... Uh, had questions about some things I don't understand. And so, thankfully, she is wonderful. She's been in the field forever. Let me get this name spelled right. E -A -N -O. Anyway, so here's some information because she's on the phone with him just great that's the client I spent way too much time on this morning and I really don't want to spend any more time on his stuff um yeah so I'm I'm so super duper ADD I'm so thankful that in the last two weeks that I've been so insanely busy with work that I've not been stress eating I've not been emotional eating um, I think a big difference too is like, I love my crunchy snack foods. And so instead of having like all the Cheetos over there, like I used to have, I have the popcorn, which is so much less bad for you. I've been having some of this every single day. This is like my afternoon evening snack and I can pour that into a bowl, which I actually keep right here, keep it right here. And I fill this bowl up that's one serving size because it's popcorn. It's 160 calories. So I'll do that once or twice a day and I get in my crunchy fix. I love it. Um, also, I've been having my morning coffees lately, which this one, like, I didn't even finish. But that's just, you know, whatever. Um, and that one's got some pumpkin creamer in it. But that's actually not cappuccino. That is actually a black coffee with creamer in it. So the only calories I'm really worried about are the creamer because I'm using sugar-free whipping and sugar-free um, caramel drizzle like I just put over the top because it's yummy um anyways that's going great so <sighs> all right I will check back in later oh boy has today been a day today is a Friday and it feels like a Monday it's crazy oh my god and that's my little rice thing I just made like why, why are you doing that? It's like you're leaking at the bottom or did you explode? I guess I put too much water in it. Oh my God, look at this. Ugh, mess. Anyways, today I had a lot of scheduled meetings with my two newest clients, very time consuming in the very beginning. Everything is just like a lot up front. Um, my stove is disgusting. I'm looking over here, I don't know. That, that is not for me, so my kids must have cooked something today, which is frustrating. But anyway, I started making these fish fillets for my lunch because I've been craving them ever since I've had them. And they're just like these little, you know, fried fish things. They have decent protein. Um, it's like 220 calories for the two of them. They're little, but I like them. But the air fryer is nasty, so now I'm going to throw this in the sink. Because that needs to be washed. I need to get some new liners. The ones I got have holes in them. So they don't actually do what they should do. So then the kids aren't using them. Um, anyway. So. It is 3.45. I've literally been on back-to-back -back conference calls all day. Which means I have done zero productive work. And my to-do list is still ginormous. So... There's that. Not fun. But anyways, so I am, 
I think I'm gonna clean this stove while I wait for my rice. I'm making me some of that four cheese rice to go with this. This, maybe my stove won't get too bad this evening. I'm planning on making like a big breakfast for dinner. And in case I didn't mention it in the earlier part of this video, I have, there you are. I have worked, um, this is one of my favorite ones for the stove that's not toxic to give you cancer and stuff. It's Method Heavy Duty Greaser. We have a gas one, so I have to take everything off. See how nasty? Anyways, kids, teenagers, yay, teenagers, what a blessing. They're gross. Okay. So, um, anyway, I've been working really late. Um, last night, I think I was up until 1.30 or 2. I didn't... I slept in a little bit this morning, but not, like, real bad. I think I was up at, like, 8. How did you overflow again? Are you kidding me? And you're not making my rice. Oh, really frustrated with that rice. Um... Anyway... I don't even remember what I was saying. I'm super ADD right now. I just, I just sent my youngest son to the next small town over to pick up his prescription because he was out of his nebulizer medicine. He didn't let me know till last night, and he just had like a few left. And his asthma is really flared up right now for the fall. Um, he can't drive his car anymore. Insurance costs decided to go up with someone, my, a carrier my husband's been with for 20 years. He was really pissed. Their service was terrible. And so we were like, okay, we'll find a different carrier. Fine. I'm going to be like that. So shopped around. Now I'm getting insurance spam calls like literally every single day. Found a different provider, but decided since he doesn't have an actual job that we're not going to put insurance on his car. So he's only allowed to drive my vehicle. And that's only if he's running an errand for me that like really has to be done. Because like, you know, nothing that's like for fun or or I could do or whatever, but I've been so busy with work lately that um, he really does help out a lot because he's home and doesn't have a job. Um, so it works out, but anyways, I was dealing with the pharmacy this morning, trying to make sure I could get it filled before they're, it's a small town pharmacy, so they're closed all weekend. So I was trying to do that, like in between calls, got the Walmart grocery order in, the meal planning done for next week. I'm not planning anything like exciting or new because I have literally like six minutes to plan my meals for next week and get everything in my Walmart cart and check out between meetings. I don't like days like this. They fly by, yeah, but they're also just sucky. <laughs> Anyways, I don't like the chaos and the stress, but uh, I know I'm a stress cleaner. That's probably why I'm in here cleaning, cleaning my stove right now. But anyway, so I'm going to have to, I'll have to cut off work at a decent time to get dinner going before my husband and the girls are home. Um, and then I will have to be back to work and again. Oh, there's spots here that just won't come off. So that's going to be my evening. So I think since I did not get a chance to really um, share much of my journey this week, I will probably carry the vlog into the weekend just so that it's, there's a little, little bit of a story here, you know, not just nothing. Uh, cause you know, this right here is riveting content, right? We're here cleaning my stove like a crackhead. And it's like, why, why is there, like nobody ever uses this burner or this mess come from. Anyways, I really dislike stoves like this, by the way, if you were to ever ask my opinion, not a fan. <clears throat> but anyways. That rice finally got done. It's supposed to take three and a half minutes, and I think I had it in there like a total of seven minutes before it even looked done. 
It's just another one of those things that makes me think my microwave is trying to give out on me after our daughter um, cooked some noodles in there without water in them because she just wasn't paying attention. And now we have a brown, like it literally, the package itself caught on fire. Look, we have a brown, this is what color it was. If you've been with me for a bit, you know I bought this just like three months ago. It's fire charred. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, it stinks. It still smells like fire. It smells like something burnt. And I think it just really messed it up. So it's not like getting to temperature or having to do everything like three and four times longer. So, that's what we're doing. But anyways, I feel better finally getting me some food. I definitely could use it. And I get back to work. I'm glad to know that so far... Oh, that makes me feel so much better. I'm glad to know that so far I've gotten done what I have gotten done. So, like, you know, I might still have a big list, which I do. Um, I need to, like, come just get in the zone, turn some true crime podcasts on get productive get going yeah because it's four now almost i've got me some sweet tea too that's something i've started doing is i'll get me a cup like this this is like a fat bottom cup it's actually one we bought for our daughter for funsies but it's actually can you see it's a normal size skinny cup it just looks fat at the bottom but anyway so it only holds like eight or nine ounces of liquid so i say that to say I'm allowing myself a cup that size or a small mason jar of sweet tea, like just whenever I want it, which is maybe once or twice a week. But the reason that's worth mentioning is because I cut out sweet tea for my life completely in 2019 and haven't had it much since. Have had it, just not, not much. And I used to drink it every single day. So what I did was I just cut it out of my everyday life. And now I would just get them every once in a while like at a restaurant or something. Um, anyway. So. I gotta change my Scentsy thing so the house smells good when the rest of my family gets home. Okay. Got that done. Okay, I feel good. I'm finally making some progress. So. I have to see what husband, what time my husband is leaving work. To go get the girls to figure out what time I want to start dinner. Here's my lunch, my late lunch at three o'clock. It's two fish fillets and a thing of the poor cheese rice aroni, which I'll probably only eat half of the rice. <sighs> so there's that. Um, anyway, so I'll see when my husband um, is heading out. I'll make some dinner. Yeah, so the rest of my day is not going to be eventful enough to share. I did want to mention I woke up this morning at 226.8. I gained 1.6 pounds. I did not eat a lot yesterday. I stayed under my 1,400 calories. Um, so that was just, that's just a, that's probably a pre-cycle bloat. I'm not concerned about it in the least. I'm doing what I need to be doing and I'm proud of myself. So that's it. So I'll check back in with you this weekend. Good morning. Oh my goodness. So it is Sunday. So I didn't share anything with you guys on Saturday <sighs> because um, the day was just kind of crazy. And I ended up choosing to go see um, my sister's newest grandbaby. So they live like hour and a half away from, well, about almost two hours away from me. So I went and saw... Um, her daughter's son-in-law and their new two-day-old, two or three-day-old baby, which was fun. Hung out with them for a couple hours. And then I drove another, like, 45 minutes from there and went to go see my sister who moved into her new house that they just had built, um, like, two, three weeks ago. Um, that's when they were actually able to officially move in. So I'd been wanting to go visit them and see um, their house. And all of their kids were either, like, not home or working or whatever. So it was just my sister and her husband. And we were hanging out and just having a great time. We haven't had a chance to... Well, honestly, we just don't make hanging out as adult siblings a priority much. My sister and I are both very busy, both very self-employed entrepreneurs, workaholics. Um, 
who are just really busy in life and have a lot of kids. We both have blended families with like seven plus kids. How many kids does she have? Six. She has six, six kids in her blended family. I have seven in mine. So a lot going on and, um, you know, three, let's see, four of her kids are grown. They're adults and they're either, well, three of the four are married with kids and one is just off on his own, bought a house, living life, whatever, not married yet. So anyways, so it's, it's hard to find time amongst life and kids and relationships and grandbabies and work when you're self-employed and don't work a set schedule and you just work when you work. Um, to make time to see each other. But I love my sister. She's my older sister. She's my big sister. And um, we've gotten closer as we've gotten older because our lives share a lot of parallels more so lately with like the blended families and being self-employed and stuff. So um, I'm trying to make more of an effort to get over that way more often because her and all her children live over there. So if I want to see her whole side of the family it's crazy to ask them to come to me because there's so many of them, you know, and they just all live over there. And so, and me and all of our kids, we live over here, you know, so it's like, we have to make an effort, um, of kind of going back and forth and getting together for holidays and stuff as we can. So hanging out at my sister's and then her, um, one of her sons and his fiance and his baby came over so that would be my sister's second grandson. And he is like 13 or 14 months. I mean, he is adorable. And we just all hung out and like then ordered shakes and just kept hanging out, hanging out. So I hung out with my sister and her family for several hours and then got home last night after the drive um, at like 1030 at night and just crashed. My husband and the kids were all in bed because they'd done the whole dance thing all day yesterday. And they got home at like 930 and all went to bed. So... Anyway, so today's Sunday. So the girls are going on a, a brief trip with their mom. So they're leaving us early today on Sunday at like noon instead of they usually are with us all day Sunday. So my husband has taken them back now. I slept in and I'm about to do my yoga and my walk because my back is killing me. I woke up with insane back pain, either from sleeping wrong or because I've not done yoga for the last few days or because... Um, my cycle is coming. My app says in two days, I, with this back pain, this could be like cramp back pain, which would mean it would come tomorrow. But either way, my watch is getting pretty, pretty spot on with predicting that. So, um, so either way it hurts and, uh, whether it's muscle or cramp related yoga will help. It always makes it feel better. Um, I've not made exercising a priority this week. I've tried to do either yoga or walking, um, walking at least one mile. I've been really alternating because work responsibilities have been insane this week. So I've been graceful with myself and not beating myself up if I didn't do any exercise, knowing that this is a temporary phase. Because that's one thing I've had to deal with, you guys, is used to. I was in the habit of if I didn't do something every single day, if I skipped a day, I was completely off the wagon. And just never did it again. And so that's always been and it still is an insecurity in the back of my mind that if I don't do something every single day, I'm going to fail myself. I'm going to self-sabotage. I'm going to never do it again. And this time I keep reminding myself, it's okay. I'm human. It's real life. Like I have things. I literally spent six hours on conference calls on Saturday and had work to do and then worked until two o'clock in the morning. Like it's not possible every single day to spend two and a half hours on an exercise routine, but it is most days. So it's okay for me to remind myself the goal is seven days a week, six more than likely with a rest day. But if I get it done three or four days a week and I'm consistent with that for the rest of my life, that is success. That is really awesome. And so I'm just reminding myself that I'm not putting too much pressure on myself in that regard because I am human. Um, and we're just going to roll on with it. And I'm really optimistic next week will be different. I'm wrapping up some small projects at work that will free up a lot of my time. And then I'm also will be easing into the second week with two new clients. And each new week with a new client gets a little bit more mellow. So looking forward to that. Ugh. Anyways, so I've got to get caught up on video editing today too. So 
I'm going to try and do that with my Sunday, be as productive as possible, but also like rest. And I also thought I wanted to paint the living room. I'm like, oh, I should paint the living room this Sunday. So I don't know what I'll get done. We'll see. And I will try to bring you guys along if I have space to record. So I just finished my workout. Got to fix my hair. <laughs> Anyways, it felt amazingly good. Oh my God. I could stretch further than I've ever stretched or at least in this round of doing yoga. So in this whole journey so far. My stretches felt, oh my God, they felt so amazing. That's the thing that I love most about yoga is I, and I think most females carry a lot of tension in our hips and our pelvic region and lower back area. And the joy of releasing that every day, stretching that out, it feels so amazing. Anyway, this is one of my favorite candies in the entire world, specifically Ghirardelli brand, peppermint bark squares. Every year this time of year, when they come out with the big bags of these, I always buy like one or two every time at the store. I freaking love them. I cannot control myself with them. They're so good. My husband saw these when he was in town yesterday and he got these for me. He would have got a big bag if they had them, but they didn't have them. So I'm thankful for that. So in this tiny little box, I guess there's two squares and it's 130 calories each. I'm literally going to have this for breakfast right now before I go on my walk because I love them. And also wanted to mention new obsession with hot coffee. Again, I've done iced coffee for years, but then when the cold weather kicked in, my body was craving that warmth in the morning. I've been having pumpkin pie creamer and black coffee with sugar-free whip and sugar-free caramel syrup on the top. Bomb every morning. Love that. And I think that keeps me from being hungry for hours. Anyways, I ran out. My husband was picking me up some in town today. So after my walk, I'm going to have my coffee and I'm excited. And yeah, I'm excited about all these things. Hey, so it's Sunday evening. I just wanted to get with you guys to wrap up this video. Presently editing last week's videos, um, getting that together. So I'm kind of doing less filming lately, which I like because I end up bringing you guys one longer video, but it's just one video. So anyways, I'm ending today, this week, um, at 226.2. .2. The video I'm editing was last week when I was sick and I had that stomach bug. And it just reminded me of... All that all over again I've got my tracker here I was just updating it for this upcoming week but let me see what we started out at after being sick okay okay Monday I had gone up a bit that's what it was so Sunday last Sunday a week ago today I was 227.8 and so right now I'm a pound less than last Sunday but what happened is after recovering from being sick I have popped up to 228.2 then I came down to 226.4 then down 226.2 then down 225.6 then on Friday I went up to 226.8 which was up like 1.2 pounds I'm not sure what that was from um Saturday I was up like another pound I don't remember what the deal was but like I didn't weigh in right on my phone so it actually didn't record the number so I remember being higher but I for did not also didn't write it down that day so then on my planner I actually just put like an X because I'm like whatever well then today I woke up and was down like 1.6 pounds so I was back down to 226.2 so I had popped up the day before my cycle today started my cycle and then went back down to where I was so all in all all throughout the week I basically lost a pound like I maintained most of my weight loss from being sick and then I also lost a pound so uh, but my numbers food wise calorie wise I've done great I've done really really great really proud of myself Monday 1365 calories Tuesday, 1,280 calories. Wednesday, 1,412 calories. Thursday, 1,279 calories. Friday, 1,520 calories. Saturday, yesterday, day before my cycle, 1,840 calories. Goes to show you I was having some food cravings and then today um i've not finished the day but i'm actually you know, i showed you just a bit ago what we had for dinner my husband and i decided to kind of snack and he thought a tuna salad sounded good um and i had wanted to make some deviled eggs this weekend and then just kind of forgot so he made the tuna salad i made the deviled eggs i had five crackers that was it i literally was stuffed when i finished 
two whole deviled eggs, not even a whole half a cup of tuna salad. I couldn't eat it all, and five crackers. I was, I'm, I'm still very full and satisfied. That was a very low calorie meal. It was only like 350 calories, and I think I'm still under like 800 for the day. It's 8.30 at night now. I'm going to go hop in the shower in a bit as soon as I get done editing videos. Um, this video, but then, um, what was I going to say? I've got to fold some laundry because I'm staring at it now. I got distracted. Oh, I might have like, um, like a keto ice cream thing or a protein shake or something. I just don't want to be drastically under my calories for the day. I'm cool with being a couple hundred under, but like if my goal is 1400, I don't want to have like 900 calories and like my body be shocked. So, um, We'll see how that goes. I did do my walk yesterday and today. I felt really good. So far, right now, I'm at uh, 8,135 steps, which is amazing. I'm thankful for that. And just doing good. So, if you have any wins, concerns, or prayer requests for this week, drop them in the comments below. We would love to encourage and support you. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions, always comment below. Let me know. And feel free to check out my Patreon. It's always linked below as well. as So is my new blog and where you can find me on medium.com. Hope you guys have a wonderful week.